Hey everybody and welcome back to my studio. So good to see everyone here again this week. And today we're talking about HDR photography, one of my favorite ways of shooting high dynamic range photography. Now, where are you on the spectrum of HDR? Is it something that you've maybe been intimidated by, you haven't really done yet, you've heard about it, but haven't tried it? You've tried it a little bit, but you're intimidated with post-processing or it just didn't turn out the way you wanted, or you've done it, you're comfortable with it, and you do it all the time. Well, I wanna encourage you to do HDR photography when necessary. I wanna move you along that continuum to the place where you're really comfortable shooting HDR photography. And along the way, I've learned when to shoot it, when not to shoot it, and how to shoot it. And of course, I've learned how not to shoot HDR. So I'll share with you today a few tips about HDR photography. This one is one of my favorites, so let's go. Okay, HDR photography's been around a long time. I kinda came to the table on it a little bit late in the game, and when I first got into it, I went completely overboard. Now, I'm not talking about in the post-processing. We've all seen those HDR photos that look like they were shot on another planet, not on planet Earth, because the situations that we've seen people edit in these things just don't exist in reality. So in one, on the one hand, that kind of steered me away from HDR because I want things that look like God created them on Earth, not something from another planet. So I didn't really want to get into this realm of fantasy photos and making things look unrealistic. So I kind of came to the table late just because of that. But when I finally got into shooting HDR photography and understanding really how to use it, I completely went overboard and I've got a hard drive full of data over here. I probably have to buy another external hard drive RAID tower just because I filled this thing up with so many HDR shots in the last year. And I shot HDR for everything, whether it needed it or not. And so the first thing I want to share with you is a little trick that I've learned on how to know when it's necessary to even use HDR. Cameras have come a really long way just in the last few years in terms of dynamic range. And that's how many stops of latitude that that sensor can give us. Now our human eye, we can see into deep shadows right into the sun bearing down on us and we can make sense of all that scene. And cameras aren't quite there yet. So in order for us to give the illusion of an image the way we saw it in God's glory, we use HDR so that we can extend that dynamic range of our shot in the edit. So here's one little trick that I've learned and that's to turn that histogram on. And if you see a mountain, meaning you've got lots of midtones, but kind of lacking on the shadows and lacking on the highlights, it's not necessary to shoot HDR. Now, when would you find a situation like that? Well, if you use uh, your higher ISOs and it's before the sun comes up or right after the sun goes down and it's all kind of flat, you may have a histogram that looks like that. Now, conversely, if you have a histogram that looks like a canyon where you've got lots of shadows and lots of highlights, also on that note, be really, really careful when you look at that histogram because you might have a little peak of highlights that don't really even show up on your histogram. It could just be flat and then all of a sudden you've got this spike in the shadows, but look really close because there could be something spiking. If you're shooting into the sun, this is likely. And if you see that canyon shape on your histogram, that's when you know you're in HDR territory. So real quickly, I'm gonna go through a couple more situations where you may wanna use HDR. And then today we're gonna do something fun. I'm gonna put up some shots and I'm gonna let you guess whether or not they're HDR or not. And I'll tell you whether you're right or not. Okay, so uh, when you're shooting from a shaded area into brightly lit areas. Now I would imagine if I open those curtains behind me, those shades, that it would be just milk city because the exposure right now is set for kind of the shadowy areas inside this room and it's bright out there. So in order for you to be able to see inside this room and outside, it would take a combination of exposures to get there. And that's the whole point of shooting HDR. 
when you're shooting like backlit grass or trees shooting into the sun look at that histogram and if you see a canyon then now you're in HDR mode and real simply when you're shooting HDR you're going to take that camera and you're going to shoot a bracketed set of shots of maybe three or more images you can shoot five stages of HDR and what that's going to do is give you maybe one stop over one stop under and then even or lately I've been shooting two stops over and two stops under and I think I, I had a conversation with Hudson Henry about this when we were out in Moab of man when you've got certain situations you really need those extra couple of stops because it's just so dramatically different you really need a pretty good range of shots and maybe even step out to five shots for your HDR and then you're just gonna come in Lightroom and you're gonna composite those together. Just right click on those images, that bracketed set, pick your dark image, pick your highlight image, pick your even ones, and then merge those together. Now exactly the best way to use HDR, of course, is when you're on a tripod. Now if you're shooting on a blazing fast shutter speed and you've got pretty good confidence in yourself as a photographer, you might be able to handhold and shoot three shots really, really fast. And I've done that and been able to successfully stitch together HDR bracketed sets in Lightroom that were handheld. So don't think that you can't just do HDR if you happen to only have your camera and no tripod because I've done it. So if I can do it, you can do it. But ideally, you would have your camera locked down on a tripod. and it's really for scenes that are being still. When is it not a good time to shoot HDR? If it's really windy and you've got a lot of foliage and things moving around, because in between those bracketed exposures, the grass could be here and then the next shot it's leaning over, then it's up again. Just not gonna really be able to stitch those together well in HDR. Also, uh, people, animals, moving subjects, not a good place for HDR. So another bit of advice I would say is to just know how to access your menus. Another thing Hudson Henry helped me with on the Nikon Z6 and 7 is using that front button to access bracketed shooting so that real quickly I can go from shooting a single frame to shooting a bracketed set and I can access that menu just like that because I'm out there, I'm shooting lots of different subject matter, and I may go from shooting HDR to just shooting straight up shots. And I want you to be able to get in your camera and find that setting as fast as possible and practice getting there so that you know when you have an opportunity to shoot HDR, that sun could be in that position only just for a moment. You need to be able to get in there and make your camera do what you need it to do really, really quickly. So I've talked about this in the past, but being really familiar with your camera and how to access this, it's also important. So now let's, uh, we got some of that out of the way. Let's go in and look at some shots and let's see whether they're HDR or not. Okay, this first one, it's the first landscape shot that I took in 2019 that really started me on my photography journey. I've showed you this picture before. So is it HDR? The answer is no. It probably should have been, but I was just taking shots with my histogram kind of yelling and screaming at me that I was... Uh, overexposed and I took a few that were underexposed but this shot should have been HDR because the Sun was coming right into the camera you can see that flare and I also had some deep uh, shadow areas around those rocks so this should have been an HDR all right the next shot these bald cypress trees in the fog is this HDR it is it probably didn't have to be, but I shot HDR anyway. Now, did it give me the ability to bring up some of the shadows in that foreground grass and crush some of the highlights in the fog in the background? It did. But my Z7 has enough dynamic range in the sensor to do this shot fairly well. So I probably didn't need to be on HDR there. All right, what about this one? I kind of almost nicknamed this shot the Jungle Book. Um, it's actually at uh, Lower Mountain Fork, and it's one of my most popular shots. Uh, I did a little poll, and this one was way up there. And uh, is this one HDR? It is. 
I'm shooting right into the sun, especially when I swept the scene and I moved that camera over to my right side. But there was such deep shadows underneath the trees. I really needed to have a three stop bracketed exposure. And really important on this one, I'll point out, if you're shooting out from under the trees and you want to maintain that blue sky, that's an area where HDR can really, really benefit you. Otherwise, you may end up with milk. And I kind of went on a, about a 10 year war against milky skies when I was shooting a lot of speed light photography, shooting straight into the sun. I would crank that exposure to four thousandth of a second and just blast speed light into my subject and just kill those milky skies and have the sun and the deep blue sky. I just kind of really love that. So I'm a fan of blue skies and shooting out from under trees, it's pretty necessary to uh, do that bracketed exposure and do HDR. All right, what about this next one? Sunset over my pond. The answer, is it HDR? Yes, it is. And on that note, what's really interesting is I shot it with this guy on auto exposure bracketing. I shot a series of stills from this drone and I was able to stitch them together like butter. This thing was just solid. It was perfectly still in the air. And I shot this HDR with a drone. So don't think that you can't shoot with drones and still do HDR panoramic exposures because you can. All right, what about this one over here at Lone Cypress? This is in uh, Pebble Beach area of California. Is it HDR? No. It was actually a panoramic shot put together with several images shot at 30 seconds exposure each with a 10 stop neutral density filter on there. And it had enough dynamic range that I did not need to do HDR on this one. So that one's a no. All right, what about this morning shot at Lower Mountain Fork? Got some really neat color and fog happening. Is this HDR? Yes, it is. This foreground rock with the moss on top was what really drew me to this scene. And it was dark, but the sun was filtering down through that low morning fog and it was absolutely killing that exposure. It. This is one of those that I started using the two stop bracketed exposure because it was so extreme. So let's take a look at another popular image of mine from my little poll I did. This is my lily pads on the pond. Is it HDR? I think this one's pretty obvious. Yes, it is. The sunsets, even though the sun ball, as I would call it, isn't in this shot, um, the clouds were really reflecting a lot of light and it made that little hole in the in the sky that was just so bright that when I really try to give that detail of this side of those trees and the kind of cut area inside that lily pad, it was hard to get those shadows without um, really blasting out that sky. And that's really the hero of this shot is that sky, right? So I wanted to have all that color and detail in those clouds. Now this was a challenge. The conditions have to be right to do a shot like this because if there's the slightest bit of wind bouncing around, then that lily pad is gonna move, especially if you're doing a panorama and you're doing an HDR scene. I think I stitched about five shots together to make that shot come full circle. So yeah, I would say the conditions would really have to be right to do this and they were. Notice the droplets on the lily pads themselves. If it had been windy and that water was rippling like that, those water droplets would not have stayed on those lily pads. I've seen that pond in that same condition and there definitely wouldn't be water in that main lily pad. I got there right after a brief summer shower. It was calm, the water was glassy. Oh my goodness, I couldn't have catalog ordered a better scene for doing HDR than that day. Next one. Shooting straight into the sun from Woodland Hills, an area I just bought some property out there in Broken Bow. This one is obvious. Yes, this one is HDR. Okay, we'll move a little faster now. Okay, I shot this one last week. Last week was a productive week for me. This was a sunrise that stopped me in my tracks. I wasn't even planning on shooting, but I walked past the door and saw this out the front door, so I grabbed my camera 
tripod ran out there and got this shot. So is it HDR? No, it's not. This one could have been HDR, but I actually looked at that histogram. I turned on the histogram and I saw that I had plenty of range to get this in one shot. So I took a series of shots in a panorama. I think it was about eight exposures and put this together. And so this one did not need to be HDR and it's right on the edge because as soon as the sun starts poking through that little hole, you see that yellow area. If it had been more exposed than it was, it was sort of hidden, then I think I would have to go into the HDR realm. But remember, blue hour in the morning and in the evening, you can get away with not doing HDR. Okay, what about this one? This one is at the windows at Arches National Park. Is it HDR? Most definitely. This one is an HDR pano that I shot into the sun. I was hiding behind that rock and it was in deep shadow. And I really wanted to get the definition of those backlit little shrubs as it uh, led your eye right into the sun. And I wanted to have the definition in the clouds and so this was a classic case for HDR. Okay, this one is at the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Reserve. I got to go out there last week. It snowed on Wednesday and I hopped in my truck and made a beeline for Wichita Mountains Wildlife Reserve. And I was hoping to see some bison. And right as I was about to throw in the towel, I hadn't seen hardly any wildlife at all. I found this herd of bison on the way out. So is this one HDR? Nope, it was flat, flat, flat. Didn't need HDR because we had plenty of overcast skies and it was gray and this was also wildlife that were moving so not a good place to use HDR anyway. But the very next day, check this one out at my pond. This rippled sky which made ribbons and ribbons down as far as you could see into the horizon. Is this one HDR? Yes it is. This one is HDR mainly because I wanted to pull some of the shadow detail up in the grass as well as the reflection and the sky. I just wanted to have a little bit more. Did it really need to be HDR? Probably not, but I kind of got overzealous and uh, made that one into an HDR. Now, how about this one? This one's a sunset at the exact same pond. You see that tree on the right? That was the same tree that was in the center uh, of the last composition. Is this one HDR? Trick question, yes and no. I actually went out to that pond to shoot this and I had no battery in my camera. Why? Because I wasn't planning on shooting photography that day and I had all my batteries on the charger. Then I was going to grab a drink of water and left my office, looked and saw the sky and before I knew it, I was running out there with my camera. Got to the pond and had no battery. So I whipped out my phone, kind of cleaned the lens off because it's always seems like my phone camera has always got grease over it. Are you that way too? I mean, my camera's nasty on my phone, so it wasn't really ready to take a, a HDR photo. But I did the little HDR mode and took a series of shots and then stitched them together. But you can tell that yeah, that grass probably could have a little more dynamic range if I had shot with a much more capable camera or shot a bracketed set on my big camera. And I'm just really bummed that I didn't have my real camera with me because I think I could have gotten something really special with this. And I might add, I did not have a tripod with me. I just took the camera and ran, made a beeline for it. And last but not least, this is a morning I shot back in uh, around Thanksgiving. Is this one HDR? Yes, it is. This one most definitely is HDR because it was so bright shooting into the sun. There would have been no blue, no definition in those shadows at all. It would have just been black. This was one of those exposures where it was two stops over, two stops under and even, and I put them all together and got this shot. So I hope this gives you kind of a a nice little range of, of shots to sort of see areas how HDR can be used, how sometimes you wouldn't really want to use it, and unlike me, you may not want to clog up an entire hard drive with nothing but HDR shots. But now I want to share a little verse I found with you for this week that I think is so appropriate. Now I'm sort of going to push this verse into our realm of HDR, 
I mean, would you think the Bible would be actually talking about HDR photography? Well, it kind of is. Check out this verse. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. And there's two reasons I want to share this. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Does that not just perfectly fit with HDR photography where one shot is overexposed and you can't get the shadows up without creating noise and the other one is overexposed and it's you can't bring the highlights back down there's no detail you've clipped everything and it's gone i mean doesn't this fit perfect that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor yes but let's keep reading for if either one of them fails the one will lift up his companion this is a perfect case for getting out with other photographers too and helping each other maybe you're having an off day you're not really finding a good composition you're struggling with hdr you go out with a buddy and you can work through things together just like my buddy Chet Steele, met him on a Hudson Henry workshop. Shout out to Chet. This guy was amazing because when I was struggling to find the right composition or frame something, I would just look and see Chet up on this perch and he would just have this knack for finding an, an amazing opportunity, a great foreground, great composition. And he was just a great guy to hang out with anyway. So look up Chet Steele, he's awesome. And then, uh, you know, going out with my buddy Randy Sander, he just has a knack for finding wildlife and putting me on a bald eagle a couple weeks ago. And I just think this is the perfect verse to encourage us as photographers to get out there and explore together because we can help each other. Don't just go out on your own all the time. Hook up with other photographers and get out there and you can really learn a lot faster that way. And while you're out there, you can practice shooting HDR. So I hope you found this video to be helpful, entertaining, useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing this with your friends. Remember to click that little bell so you know when I go live with another episode. And this week I want to encourage you to get out and shoot some HDR photography. If you have questions about HDR, feel free to hit me up in the comments. If you have uh, any shots that you've done in HDR, feel free to share those too. I'd love to see a little community come together and maybe even critique each other's shots on here. So feel free to post shots too in the comments. So get out there. I hope you have a great week and good luck shooting HDR. Thanks guys. And I'll see you again on the next episode. And if you happen to miss either of my last episodes, here's links to those right now.